It's entirely likely that you've heard things like our body needs to be in an alkaline state in order to be in th thriving health or things like acidity is the worst thing in the body and it's very harmful or it's, it causes cancer. And I want you to take a slightly different view on a healthy tissue. And instead of thinking it as for, uh, uh, through the lens of pH, I want you to think about it through the lens of voltage. And I'm gonna talk about what those two terms mean because pH gets thrown around a lot. So uh, pH essentially has a scale to it, right? Um, and things, uh, thing, it's a scale of zero to 14, okay? So if ever you looked at, looked at a pH scale, you would see a scale zero to 14, and you would see that at seven, a pH of seven, that's neutral. We'll talk about what that means. And then at the far end, obviously, you have a, from, uh, from essentially just above seven all the way to 14 is a pH, um, th that is a, what's called alkaline or basic pH. And then below seven, all the way to zero, right? is acidic pH. pH is simply a measurement of essentially the concentration of naked hydrogen. Hydrogen by itself, H plus, is acidic, okay? And it's not bad, that's not a bad thing because the body needs both acids and bases. Um, and different tissues require different pHs for optimum health. And so it's very myopic to say everything needs to be basic, everything needs to be alkaline or, you know, what is it, get, get alkaline or die or something along those lines, right? Now, um, this might be TMI, but I studied extensively the vaginal microbiome in my undergraduate uh, degree, for my undergraduate degree. In order to graduate, we had to write what was called a senior thesis. And my senior thesis uh, professor, she studied the, the vaginal microbiome extensively through the lens of something called bacterial vaginosis, which is a vaginal infection. And to try to understand what would happen, why bacterial vaginosis would start to thrive in, a, in certain conditions. And what she discovered and what we, you know, typed up and wrote about was the fact that the vaginal pH needs to be acidic for a healthy vaginal microbiome. And as soon as that pH drifted off to be too alkaline, that's when all of a sudden the bacterium that naturally exists inside the vaginal canal, that bacterium called Gardnerella vaginalis, um, would start to be able to thrive. It, start, it would start to grow and become pathogenic in and express the symptoms of bacterial vaginosis when the vagina was too alkaline. I'm not gonna go into the details about like when that occurs, um, but there was key times where we could talk about how, how the pH would shift and that pH would allow that bacterium to thrive. There's also parts of our cells, believe it or not, inside of our cells, we've got tiny little organelles called the lysosomes. They actually also require a highly, highly acidic pH in order for them to dissolve stuff, right? To break stuff down. Those lysosomes are essentially like the little garbage plants of the cell. So the cell dumps things into the lysosomes that it no longer needs. The lysosomes use a lot of uh, its acidic content to break the stuff down. So to say it is, we always need to be alkaline, that's a misnomer. We don't want our skin to be alkaline. We need a slightly uh, acidic pH for our skin, right? So that so different tissues all the way down to the scale of the different compartments inside of a cell require different pHs. And so another way of saying pH that I think is highly, highly useful is actually transforming pH to voltage. So this is the work of Dr. Jerry Tennant, but also Dr. Jerry Pollack and other people who have started to view health through the lens of cellular charge. And I have come to realize as a clinician that we could essentially um, categorize things that are charge stealers in the body versus things that are charge donors. And we can do different things to support the body by minimizing the charge stealers and maximizing the charge donors. So what does that, what does charge mean? Well, the body is electric. We have essentially electric currents, electricity currents, and proton currents running through us at all times, or we're designed to. And the for, and, and the blood essentially is designed to have a bit more negative charge associated with it. You could, if it was a pH measurement, it would be a pH of about seven point three four to or seven point three five to seven point four five, slightly alkaline. Um, another way of saying that is negative 20 to negative 25 millivolts. The interior of cells also are designed to be 
negatively charged. I talk about this and from anywhere, anywhere between negative 20 up to negative 90 millivolts, right? So we do need that negative charge. That's electron rich, electricity rich. Um, and so it, the way that I view this is through, are we giving the body adequate charge instead of let's talk, let's talk about eliminating acidity. Let's talk about adding charge to the body, cellular voltage, cellular, and that's synonymous with cellular health, because I've talked extensively about how the body drains, how that when the cells drain of that negative charge, they start to become highly dysfunctional. There's lots of inflammation going on in those cells. Those cells have mitochondrial dysfunction and they reach a critical threshold where those cells are so drained of their negative charge that they get the signal to start dividing uncontrollably, which can lead to both pathological and malignant tumors, but also benign tumors as well. But either way, uncontrolled cell, cell growth, uh, an uncontrolled cell growth cycle is a pathological state for a tissue. And so what's responsible in my experience and in my understanding, again, thanks to Jerry Pollack, Jerry Tennant, people like that, is that the water inside of the cell is what holds the charge in different ways, in different cell types to establish healthy a healthy cellular voltage. And so Jerry was Jerry Pollack was the one who found that that water is negatively charged. And that water also has a portion that easy water, yes, it's negatively charged, but it also has a portion that is positively charged, a proton current. So essentially it's the water dynamics, the, this exclusion zone, easy water inside and around cells that determines things like how healthy their membrane potential is, how healthy the interior of the cell is in terms of, yes, it is alkaline, but it's alkaline because it has this beautifully charged water inside of it. And so it's completely reframing cellular health. I'm not saying that pH is wrong. I'm just saying I think it's way more actionable when we start to understand that the water is responsible for the healthy charge inside of the interior of the cells. And then we have to ask ourselves, what are things that we can do to maintain that healthy cellular voltage? Now, inside of my voltage reset course, I have two and a half hours worth of really like short video lectures that you could go to understand this on a deep level. But I'm going to let you know that light exposure matters because certain wavelengths of light, such as natural light, are what helps to charge that cellular voltage. Earthing and grounding matter. So having ways where you can understand how to ground outdoors, what surfaces are grounding, how to ground indoors, even without a grounding mat. Believe it or not, a bathtub, at least in the United States, I'm certain of this, the bathtubs need to be grounded because the, the water tank is grounded and the water is a conductor of charge from the earth. So the water essentially being in water inside of a home is, all, is a way that we could be grounded. And if you think about it, we are designed to be grounded at all times. And so being divorced from Earth's charge is a major detriment to maintaining healthy cellular voltage and healthy cellular vitality. So those are just two things. And again, I go extensively into this in the voltage reset course, including the water that we drink, because that can make a huge difference. If we drink toxic city tap water, acidic water, it's not ideal for the body. It can actually be a charge stealer. And even emotions that, you know, fear, for example, can be a char huge charge stealer because it changes our mitochondria's ability to make that healthy water for us. And so all of these things go together hand in hand. And it may sound complex right now, but in the grand scheme of things, I find there's three things, there's three categories to focus on when it comes to supporting this cellular voltage. The first one is maintaining that exclusion zone water. And what are things that we can do to maintain that exclusion zone water? Like I said, sunlight, infrared light is a huge one. So is earthing. What can we do to optimize the water that our mitochondria make? Because if they're continually replenishing this intracellular water that holds this negative charge, we want them to be able to do just that. And then third is the water that are, that we're drinking. It, uh, we can really transform the water that we're drinking to give charge and energy to the body, to make the body more apt to want to pull in and absorb that water in the first place. And that water will hydrate our blood, hydrate the space around the cells. And once those hydration layers are, are replete, they're full, that water then gets to go into the interior of the cell and help to maintain intracellular hydration while removing wastes as well. 
well. So it's a beautiful, it really is a beautiful um, kind of like way to view health, in my opinion, as a clinician, because I'm not just addressing an organ system, uh, you know, what's going on with your stomach, what's going on with your pancreas, what's going on with your muscles, right? If you've got pain, myo, like myofascial tension and fibromyalgia type pain, and we're doing it as a whole body because as you optimize these things for the whole entire body, each cell in each organ and organ system gets to optimize its function. So again, cellular voltage, energy, we are electrical beings. And if we can start to view ourselves as what can we do to maintain this electric body and this energy rich, negatively charged body, and what are the things that we may be doing like excessive wireless radiation exposure, especially close on the body, that steals that voltage, steals that charge. And if we start to slowly optimize these categories, we can bring about some pretty transformative health, uh, health experiences for people.